In these clips, we see planes dropping conventional bombs from a very low altitude. The bomb will contact the ground in around two seconds. It will then skip bounce, becoming airborne and restriking the ground, much like skipping a stone on a pond. Skip bombing was pioneered by the RAF and adopted by Kenny's Fifth Air Force in the Pacific Theater as a way to increase bombing accuracy when attacking shipping. Although the bombs used by the USAAF are standard high-explosive demolition bombs fitted with special delay fuses, the RAF developed special spherical bouncing bombs for their attacks like seen in this image. The intent of this video is to review U.S. skip bombing tactics, weapons, and its combat effectiveness. We will also review a case study where a skip bombing attack went very wrong. One of the key tenets in ship bombing attacks is for the attacker to get the bomb to detonate below the waterline, as discussed on this page from a 1944 Army-Navy document on bomb and fuse selection. This requires adequate bomb deck penetration. Deck penetration is a function of the bomb strike speed and bomb case integrity. Bomb strike speed is best obtained through a high altitude release. However, bomb accuracy diminishes dramatically as bomb release altitude increases. This page quantifies accuracy levels for medium and high altitude ship bombing attacks from a 2021 Naval War College document on the B-25 gunships of World War II. Medium and high altitude attacks on Japanese shipping were not effective. B-25s and B-26s dropped 859 bombs on Japanese ships during September and October 1942. 28 of these bombs struck ships, or 3.3%, and only 3 ships sank. To mitigate this abysmal success rate, General Kenny started contemplating using skip bombing to increase the bomber's ship strike rate. This diagram from a 2005 Maxwell Air Force Base document on bombers in the Southwest Pacific can be used to describe skip bombing. The bomber approaches a target from its broadside and releases a bomb from an altitude of 50 feet at a speed of 240 miles per hour, 600 feet from the target. The bomb will skip here, 60 feet short from the ship's side, bounce, and contact the side of the ship here. It will either penetrate the hole or drop into the water and sink. If the hole side is one inch or less, the bomb will likely penetrate the side and have a delayed detonation. If the hole side is greater than one inch, the bomb will likely dent the side and fall straight down into the water, sink, and then detonate. Either way, it will not detonate at ship side contact. If it sinks and detonates below the ship's waterline, it will damage the ship like a torpedo. To be damaging, though, it needs to detonate within around 5 feet from the ship's side. Another type of low-altitude attack is the masthead precision bombing attack, where the bomb is released at a faster speed of 310 miles per hour, and the bomb strikes the side of the ship without skipping. The bomb again penetrates a hole and detonates, or slides down the ship's side into the water and detonates. This page from an 89th Bombardment Squadron report outlines skip bombing tactics. The tactics in this report are based on A-20 experiences. Two planes make up the attack formation. The two-plane attacking element provides better flexibility to counter a maneuvering ship and or avoiding the ship's AA fire. It also has twice the forward machine gun striking power. This also helps given the limited bombers available. Once the ship target has been selected, from a 2,000 foot altitude, a diving turn is made towards the target, keeping the speed at 280 miles per hour. The faster the speed gives equivalent bomb placement accuracy as a slower speed attack and reduces the time exposed to the ship's anti-aircraft fire. The bomber should start firing beyond the gun's effective range, targeting the ship's deck guns. Suppressing the ship's AA fire is a critical component of the attack. This is why the B-25s upsize their forward-facing armaments, like seen in this image. The B-25s upsized armaments evolution gave it the nickname the Commerce Destroyer. As discussed in this 1992 Maxwell Air Force Base document on the 5th Air Force medium bombers in World War II. The B-25's forward-facing guns were effective in suppressing the ship's AA guns and survived the low-altitude encounter. Without the new armaments, the B-25's were getting shot up by the ship's AA fire. 10 or even 20 50 caliber guns would suppress a ship's AA fire. A new attack tactic included. Two bombers coordinated a ship attack 90 degrees from each other. One B-25 strafed the ship from stem to stern, while the other B-25 strafed along its beam. The second B-25 would also bomb the ship. The modified B-25s were designated the B-25C1. The bombardier's compartment was eliminated and the belly turret was removed. This image shows the location of the belly turret. Four 50 caliber machine guns were added to the side of the nose and four under the pilot's compartment. The modified Mitchells could sport eight forward-facing machine guns. 
The guns were not harmonized to converge at a point. They were pointed straight ahead. The bomber's gun strike pattern was 5 to 6 feet wide and 3 feet deep. Each gun was fed by 480 rounds. The repeating ammo mix for ship attacks include two tracers, three incendiary, and five armor-piercing cartridges. I'm surprised incendiary cartridges were used. The armor-piercing round seems better suited for this task. Additional coordinated ship low altitude strafing bombing attack tactics are listed on this page. When strafing a ship lengthwise, it's best to approach from the ship's bow. Other sources indicate attacks from the stern are preferable. The bomber's firepower is increased and the ship's AA fire is decreased. A two plane coordinated attack increases the attack's effectiveness. The element suppressing firepower is doubled and it dilutes the ship's AA fire. It's also flexible enough to allow some evasive maneuvering. If the ship is being attacked by multiple two-plane elements, the elements are safe once they pass over the ship as the AA gunners will reposition for the next attacking threat. Only one bomb should be released per attack. This page from a November 1943 intelligence report outlines the trail duration for multiple attacking elements. The attacking elements should be trail spaced 12 to 15 seconds apart. This duration is needed to clear the debris field of the preceding detonating bombs blast. Once in range, the bombers will concentrate their forward-facing guns on the ship's AA fire, which can be seen by flashes. The goal is to spray the area with bullets, suppressing the ship's return AA fire, not blow up the ship. An exploding ship is dangerous, as the bombers may pass over the exploding field at mast height altitude. Let the bombs destroy the ship. The bomb of choice is a 500-pound general-purpose bomb fitted with a 4-5 to five second time-delayed fuse. The fuse time delay will allow the bomber safe passage beyond the ship at bomb detonation. This page from a 1945 bomb and fuses document outlines characteristics on a cutaway of the M64 general-purpose bomb. The bomb is 57 inches in length, 14.2 inches in diameter. Its weight equates to 525 pounds when filled with 267 pounds of TNT. The bomb is fitted with the M13 time-delayed tail fuse only, no nose fuse. This page shows characteristics and a cutaway of the M113 time-delayed tail fuse. The tail fuse is fitted with the 4 to 5 second time-delay primer detonator. The fuse is armed after 18 to 21 vein revolutions or 100 feet of air travel. The proficiency of bomb placement is based on pilot practice. The bomb should strike the ship at its waterline or just short of the waterline. The most susceptible part of the ship is below its waterline. The lower the better, like seen in this image. Mast height attacks need to be coordinated to attack simultaneously as to dilute the ship's AA fire. This report describes a 5th Air Force B-25 skip bomb ship attack that went very wrong. The case is reviewed so that the skip bombing mistakes made during this attack can be learned from and hopefully save lives. The B-25 attack occurred on August 28, 1943. The target is this ship. The skip bomb attacking B-25 is here and his wingman is here. The wingman is way too far away and too high for a coordinated attack. The attacking B-25's bomb struck the water here and skipped to this location well above the ship. A bomb detonates at the ship here from an earlier close trail attack and throws up blast debris which strikes the attacking plane. This plane is still too far away to assist in the attack. The attacking plane's bouncing bomb strikes the water here and sinks. The bomb blast at this ship breaks off the left wing of the B-25 just outboard of its number one engine. The wing is here. The remaining airplane is here. The attacking B-25's bouncing bomb detonates here, underwater. The out-of-control attacking B-25 strikes the water here. His wingman looks to be exiting the area. The three mistakes made during this attack are summarized as follows. Not maintaining a 12-second trail space duration. The attacking B-25s are too loose in formation. This was not a coordinated attack. The lead plane attacked too low, forcing him to pull up, spoiling his aim. So how effective is skip bombing as compared to medium and high altitude bombing? The combat effectiveness of skip bombing is summarized in this 1945 Army Air Force Technical Intelligence Report. A competent pilot can strike a ship at a 90% rate, as the element of surprise and accuracy is greater than other bombing methods. Skip bomb accuracy is a function of practice, muscle coordination, and depth perception. In summary, skip bomb accuracy varies based on crew proficiency. In best case, a well-trained crew can achieve a 90% ship strike rate. This increases the strike accuracy by a factor of 27 over the medium and high altitude ship strike accuracy rate of 3.3%.
If you have found this 5th Air Force skip bombing attack tactics deep dive video interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.